Hello, it's Hammy Time, and in this video I show you my DIY double IKEA lemon hamster cage. It's one unit with two separate cages for two different hamsters. It's based off of Vanilla Ham Ham's DIY IKEA Linman cage. I put a link to her video in the description, so definitely watch her video if you haven't already. It's made from IKEA wood and glass tabletops. It has doors on the sides, which will eventually have enclosed stairs and ramps. I added wheels to make it easier to move. To double it, I used IKEA Lag Captain 55 inch tabletops for the side walls. The bottom and back walls of the cage are IKEA Linman tabletops. The glass windows are IKEA Hemnes glass tops. The lids are made from wood and wire mesh from my local hardware store. The inside has removable cloud banner paper attached to poster board. I wasn't able to paint the cloud background because the wood surface is too slick so the paint wouldn't adhere properly. Each level is approximately 858 square inches of floor space. On the inside it measures 39 inches long by 22 and a quarter inches deep by 18 inches tall. Here's my hamster Evie to give you some perspective. I added the doors so my hamsters could have access to the playpen. They're made from kitchen sink parts. The door covers slide back and forth. The rubber seal and door stoppers keep it stuck in place so my hamsters can't move them. The bottom door currently has a temporary ramp and the top door has to remain closed until I can get the stairs made. To access the top cage, I have to use a stool, which is also from IKEA. I chose to make this cage because the IKEA parts were inexpensive and easy to get. It's a good size, the glass gives me a better view, and the height is tall enough to put in a lot of bedding for my hamsters to burrow in. The double stack design frees up space. My hamsters are kept in a multi-purpose room, so space can sometimes be an issue. I made this cage entirely by myself because I had the tools and skills to do it. The most important tool I needed to do this by myself was this clamp. I could not have put it together by myself without this 48 inch long clamp. I didn't glue any of the wood together because I want to be able to take it apart if I ever need to. I saved the IKEA boxes for the glass to keep the glass in if I ever have to take it apart. The IKEA tabletops are hollow and filled with corrugated cardboard, except for the ends which have pieces of solid composite wood. The hollow wood makes it much lighter and easier to move around, but it's still too heavy to lift, so I had to assemble it in the room where I keep my hamsters. The wheels are two and a half inch swivel wheels from my local hardware store. The brackets holding the glass in place are modified metal mirror holders. I used a vise and hammer to make them. I used one of the IKEA brackets that came with the glass. The top lid has a modified lid support hinge to hold the lid open. I added latch hooks on the sides to lock it down. The bottom lid has a hook to hold it open and modified latched hooks to lock it down. Overall, it was not too difficult to make. I made a lot of mistakes, but nothing I couldn't fix. My hamsters are currently living in the enclosures and are doing well. I'll show my hamsters set up and do a cage tour in another video. From this point I show the process of making the cage. I apologize for any bad lighting or camera work. I did my best to film as I made it. There were no retakes. I had to focus on what I was doing so I had to use whatever video I got. I went to Ikea to get the parts I needed. I got four Lindman tabletops and two Lag Captain tabletops. Unfortunately, they were out of the Hemnes glass tops, so I had to order two of them online. I went to my local hardware store and got the wood for the lid. I got the hardware cloth wire mesh in the garden supply section. I got the quarter inch size. I picked up three packs of the mirror holder brackets. I got one box of number 10 three inch wood screws. I got one box of number 12 one inch wood screws to attach the wheels. 
I got one pack of quarter inch flat washers. These are for the screws for the wheels. I got four two and a half inch rubber swivel caster wheels. In the specialty hardware section, I got a pack of three sixteenths by one and a quarter size fender washers. These are to reinforce the screws holding up the top cage. I got one lid support hinge. It didn't matter if it was for the right side or the left because I removed the top piece to install it on the outside of the cage. Usually the support hinges are installed on the inside to hide it. I got five small latch hooks. I got a pocket hole jig. This is to make the frames for the lids. It's a guide for your power drill so you can get very neat and secure joints. I got a three inch hole saw. This is for cutting out the holes for the doors. The three inch was too small and the three and a half inch was too big so I had to get the three inch and use other tools to make the hole bigger. I got this 48 inch clamp, which was long enough to fit and hold the walls in place so I could screw them together. I got some interior paint to paint the sides of the cage. This paint is zero VOC, so it has almost no odor. I got two shower strainers to use for the door covers. I got two stainless steel garbage disposal kits. I only use the flanges. They were almost the same width as the tabletops. I had to modify them a little bit. I got the aquarium sealant from the pet store. I got several sheets of poster board from the dollar store. These were for the cloud background. I got the cloud banner paper from the craft store. I got a sheet of self-adhesive foam from the craft store. I used this to pad the mirror holder brackets so they don't damage the glass. I got two pieces of plywood from the craft store. These were for the door stops. Here are some of the things I already had. Drywall anchors, I use these to attach the door covers. Nails to attach the door stops. Wood glue for the door stops. Epoxy for the door stops and washers. A compass to measure and make the door stops. Mounting tape for the cloud banner background. Glue stick for the poster boards. White spray paint for the hardware. Hinges for the lids. My Dremel and diamond blade for cutting the wire mesh and enlarging the door holes. A power drill, wood filler, a screwdriver, a hammer, a mallet, a vise, chisels, a file, a stapler, clamps, a workbench and saw horse, a saw guide, circular saw, miter saw, and a scroll saw. So the first thing I did was inspect the Hemnes glass when it arrived. I was amazed it didn't break. It came in a thin box with very little packaging. The glass has holes in it for the brackets that it comes with. I only used two of them because they're very thin and I didn't trust them to hold the glass up in a vertical position. They're designed to hold the glass in place lying flat on top of a dresser. To get the exact measurements of where to cut the back walls, I set the lemon tabletops on its side and placed the Hemnes glass up against it so I could trace it. That's where I'll cut to make the back the same height as the glass front. For the side walls, I laid the glass on top of the Lag Captain tabletops and traced it at the bottom and then moved it to the top. This is just a mark where it'll connect so I know where to drill. These are not cut lines. I did this to both the Lag Captain side walls. To cut the lemon back walls, I used a circular saw. The IKEA tabletops are mostly hollow, so they're very easy to cut. I cut both back walls. These are the only cuts I had to make. The next thing I did was modify the mirror holder brackets for the glass. I used a vise to bend the metal and flatten it into an L shape. Two of these had to be modified a bit more to hold the top of the bottom cage glass. I spray painted them white to match the cage. The next thing I did was figure out where to cut the holes for the doors. I traced the sink flanges to mark where to cut. I practiced using the hole saw on a scrap piece. To use the hole saw, I pre-drilled first and then cut the holes. The three inch hole saw was too small, so I had to use my Dremel to cut it to size. I had to file it down a bit to get the flanges to fit perfectly. The flanges were a little too deep, so I used a mallet to turn down the lip to eliminate the gap between it and the wall. 
I used a hammer to flatten the other side to shorten it a little bit so it would be more flush with the wood. I was going to fill the gaps with wood filler, but I ended up not doing that. That side is hidden by the door cover, so it really didn't matter. The next thing I did was make the cloud banner backboards. I had tried to paint the clouds with children's tempera paint, but the wood surface was too slick and the paint easily scratched off. I also tried to glue the banner with a glue stick, but that peeled off too easily too. It may have worked if I had used the brown back side of the IKEA tabletops because the surface is not as slick. Unfortunately, at this point, it was too late to flip the boards around. I made the cloud panels before I assembled the cage because it was easier to measure out a continuous cloud image. I marked where to cut on the poster boards to fit each wall. To cut out the holes, I poked a hole and pushed the paper in and then cut it out. I was sure to mark it so I wouldn't get confused later. I cut out the poster boards and temporarily taped them together. I cut a piece of the banner a little longer than the walls. I flipped it over and placed the poster boards on top. I glued the banner to the poster boards. I cut them out, made sure they fit, and trimmed off any extra bits. The next thing I did was attach the wheels. I messed up the first time because I put the wheels in the wrong position and I had to redo them. I marked where the solid wood is to be sure to drill into it and not the hollow part. I marked where the back wall will attach to leave more space for the three inch screws when I assemble the walls. I marked where to drill the holes. I pre-drilled them and I attached the wheels. Next, I marked and pre-drilled the holes to attach the back wall. I was able to pre-drill and screw in the first three inch screw here, but I realized how important it was to use clamps. The clamps hold the boards in place so I can get a tight fit and prevent any gaps. I assembled the back walls to both the bottom boards. I stopped at this point because a completely assembled cage would be too heavy for me to carry up the stairs, so I decided to assemble the rest of it in the hamster room. The problem with assembling in the hamster room was the room has carpet, so it was hard to get the boards to line up perfectly on the soft carpet. The extra long clamp was absolutely necessary. I clamped up the side walls and screwed in the bottom cage first. The top cage had to be screwed into the hollow part of the side walls, so to reinforce it, I glued on fender washers with epoxy. This will help keep the screws from wearing down the wood over time. I used a two-part epoxy to get a permanent bond. This goes on the outside of the cage, so my hamsters will never come into contact with it. Here it is after I screwed in all the walls. I don't put the glass on until I'm ready to make the lids. I added an extra screw in the center of the top cage just to be sure it was secure. Next I sealed it with aquarium sealant. This small tube was enough because I decided not to seal the glass wall which was kind of a mistake. The sealant prevents any urine and bedding from getting down into the crack so I recommend sealing the glass as well. If you have to remove the glass and replace it you can easily reseal it. I put a thin amount all along the bottom edges. It's not a watertight aquarium so I didn't need much. I put the first cloud panel in place and trimmed it down to fit perfectly. I used mounting tape from the dollar store to attach the panels. The package says it's permanent, but I expect to be able to scrape it off later when I need to. I put strips of tape along the top only so the panels hang down from it. The bedding will push the panels in place at the bottom. Next I filled in the holes with the wood filler so I could paint the brown sides. Once it dried, I scraped it off with a razor blade. This is the paint I used. It's zero VOC. It has almost no odor at all, which is great because I could paint in the room and not worry about the fumes. Unfortunately, the paint was a little bit tacky after it dried. It made the door covers stick a bit so they don't slide as easily as I would like. Next, I worked on the door covers. It's a very simple design. It's just drain strainers screwed in at the top. I drilled one small hole at the top with my power drill. To make the door stops, I used a compass to measure and draw out the shape onto some cardboard to make a template. I used the template to trace onto some plywood. I used two different sizes. One is a quarter inch thick and the other is an eighth inch thick. The quarter inch is for the second layer and the eighth inch is for the top layer. I used my scroll saw to cut the pieces out. I originally thought I would have two stops for each door, but I only ended up using one for each. I glued them with some wood glue, clamped them together and let them dry. 
To pad them, I used a sheet of self-adhesive foam from the craft store. I cut out a piece to fit under the top layer. This is to keep it from scratching the door cover and to stop it from moving. To attach the door covers, I used wall anchors. These are used for drywall installations like hanging pictures or shelves. The metal expands when you turn the screw which anchors it and keeps the screw from falling out. I had to use these because the hollow IKEA tabletops would not hold the screws in without them. The first step is to nail it in with a hammer. The next step is to turn the screw to expand the anchor on the inside and then remove the screw. The last step is to put the screw through the door hole and screw it into the wall anchor. I didn't make it too tight so I could slide it back and forth easier. The rubber part around the edges tends to stick to the wall so I have to peel up the rubber a little bit to unstick it. Next I added the door stops. I positioned it at the bottom and marked it with a pencil. I put some epoxy on it and stuck it in place. I used a little level bar to make sure it was level. I nailed in the corners to hold it in place while the epoxy dried. To attach the bottom cage glass, I had to modify the upper mirror brackets to get it to hold the glass flush with the wood so there wouldn't be any gaps. I could have used the modified brackets I already made, but I had the tools to customize it to get a better fit, so that's what I chose to do. I used my vise to flatten the mirror bracket into an L shape. I used my hammer to make a fold. I used a chisel to make another fold. And then I just hammered it into shape. I only had to make two of them. To protect the glass, I cut out strips of the foam sheet and put them only where they touch the glass. To attach the glass, I laid the cage down on its back and set the glass down on top of it. I put the brackets in place. I made sure to put the brackets on the ends where the solid wood is. The center IKEA bracket is mostly to cover one of the holes in the glass. To attach the brackets, I used the screws the mirror brackets came with. To make the lids, I measured the top of the cages. The bottom cage lid is a little smaller because the lid has to fit inside the walls and the top lid sits on top of them. I used one by three inch wood for the lid frames. I measured and marked where to cut. I used a miter saw to cut the wood. I used a pocket hole jig to join the corners. It was the first time I ever used one, so I tested it out on some scrap pieces first. I drilled pocket holes at the ends of the shorter pieces. I clamped them together and put the screws in. It makes a very secure frame. This is a good alternative to using mending plates. I used wood filler to fill the holes. I put them on the cage to make sure they fit. I noticed that the screws for the brackets holding the glass was making too much of a gap, so I marked it with a pencil so I could cut out a pocket for it. I used a chisel and a power drill to make the pockets. The pockets give it a better fit. I painted the lid frames with the same paint I used for the cage. I used quarter inch hardware cloth. I used my Dremel with a diamond blade to cut the wire. I used a Sharpie to mark where to cut. I stapled the wire onto the frames. To install the lids, I used hinges that I already had. To attach the hinges, I screwed them onto the underside of the lid frame first. The top lid needed a support hinge. Normally these go on the inside of a storage chest to hide it, but for safety reasons it needs to go on the outside. I wanted to attach the hinge to the side of the lid to prevent gaps, so I had to remove the top piece that mounts under the lid. I used a chisel and a file to break the rivet holding it on. I spray painted the latches and support hinge white to match the cage. The bottom cage lid overlaps a bit, so I had to bend the latches to fit. To attach the lift hinge, I opened the lid as far as I could, marked where to put it, and screwed it in. To hold the bottom lid open, I added another latch that hooks underneath the top cage. 
The last thing I needed to do was to attach the water bottle holders, but I had to wait until I set up the inside to be sure where to position it. I added lights later. These really helped me with spot cleaning and filming videos. So that's how I made my double Linman hamster cage. I'm really happy with how it turned out. I'm so glad I went to the trouble to add the doors. My hamsters seem to really appreciate them. Part two of this cage build video is the setup and cage tour, which I hope to have out very soon. I had a lot of fun setting it up.